Hey, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. Thanks for joining us this week on In Depth. On Now You Know. All right, so this week uh, we had the Q1 conference call from Tesla. Okay. And normally these are boring affairs with a lot of gobbledygook in the beginning about numbers and how we did this quarter. But this time, um, Elon's like, hey, you know what? Uh, we did pretty well. Let's just open it up to questions and answers from analysts. So we nice. have over an hour of just people asking Elon questions. Which and is... he's so good off the cuff. Like he's just, he'll run numbers in his head and yeah. just sort of come up with, with, with facts and ideas. And it's almost like he's brainstorming while people are asking him questions. He totally stuff. is. He's he's not like a scripted CEO who's just reading off a script. He, right. You ask him a question, he tells you what he And then he'll thinks. ramble on about something else. Like yeah, it's he, super he goes down, fun to listen to. It really is. Um, so we just wanted to share with you because you probably maybe didn't have time to listen to the whole conference call. Absolutely. So here's some little tidbits that we get gleaned from it. Uh, like, did you know that the Gigafactory is so big that when it's built, you'll be able to fit over three pentagons inside of it? Wow. Three pentagons? Like, if you've ever been to Washington and seen the Pentagon, you know what a ginormous building That's that is. That's massive. Three, more than three. He was like, three, maybe four. Or did you know that the semi-tractor-trailer truck that Tesla's going to be building is currently using in their prototype Model 3 motors? Really? I mean, it's a semi-truck. You can't put a normal gas engine in a semi-truck and expect it to run. Yeah, just a little something he mentioned. He's like, wow. I'm not sure if I should be mentioning this, but that's what we did. And, and this is the same semi that he says could drag a diesel semi up a hill. That's how powerful it is in torque. So, just pretty cool. I like it. So, one of the big things he did want to point out um, was about the M3. He kind of admitted that m naming it the Model 3 was a little bit of a mistake in terms of marketing, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's not the third model, right? I mean, you've got the Roadster, Model S, Model X. It yep. would, should be Model 4, right? Mm -hmm. But that confused a lot of people, he thinks, into thinking that it's the next Gener it's the next generation. I see. Like it's going to be more advanced than an S or an X. And yeah. what he wants to make clear to people is, I kind of goofed. I wanted it to be called the Model E. Remember, sexy. Right. Um, but he couldn't get that from Ford, so he had to do the little funny three. And that's confused people into thinking, if you buy a Model 3, you're going to get this latest, highest tech thing. It's not. Right. right. It's a cheap car. It's a cheaper car. So it's... the amazing part about this car is not that it'll have more technology than the Model S and X. It's that it'll have about the same technology for a way cheaper price point. Absolutely. So there seem to be a lot of questions from analysts about how the Model 3 was actually going to achieve these goals that he set out. And yeah. What he wanted to point out was that right now in the U.S. there's about 100,000 luxury cars that are sold every year. Okay. He pointed out that Tesla has one third of that market already. Wow. Yeah. One third of the luxury car market. And then he pointed out that the Model 3 will be in the next part of the segment of the market, which is has a bigger potential. 17 million cars are sold in the U.S. every year. Yeah. Okay. We just pointed out that 100,000 or so of those are luxury. So it's a tiny fraction. A tiny fraction. The big chunk of those cars is in the cheaper priced car market. And so the Model 3 will have a 30 to 70 times bigger potential market than the Model S and X. Why? Because it's a cheaper car yeah. and more of us can afford it. Yeah. So this is going to open up the market to just a huge number of people Yeah. that currently aren't able to get into a Tesla. Wow. Seems obvious to you and I and probably to all of you guys, but to a lot of analysts, it was kind of news to them. So back in about 2014, an analyst had talked on one of these conference calls and, te and uh, Elon had mentioned that he th saw a clear path for uh, Tesla becoming a seven hundred billion dollar company, or basically it's valued seven hundred billion. Yeah, being basically valued the same as Apple. And at the time, the analyst had kind of laughed it off, thinking that he was just making some off the cuff remark. Mm -hmm. So they asked him again this time. They said, "Well, you'd brought that up back in two thousand fourteen that you could somehow be a seven hundred billion dollar company." And he said, "Oh yeah, I see a clear path for Tesla becoming worth the same as Apple." Wow. So he didn't backtrack on it. I think that's pretty exciting. So yeah. for all of you people, the company's worth about fifty billion dollars now. Um, if Elon thinks that there's a clear path to 700 billion, maybe you want to bet on Elon. Yeah. He pointed out in this conference call that the software to make the cars in the factory is far more complex than the software to drive the cars. And that is where he sees a huge advantage that Tesla will have because they are making the machine that makes the machine. Right. And so a lot of car companies are not doing that. They are just doing it the old fashioned way. There's some robots in the factory, lots of people in the factory. Mm -hmm. Um, he thinks his, their big advantage at Tesla is that when they get this right, when they finally figure out how to build the machine that makes the machine, they will be able to just produce cars so much faster and cheaper than their competition. Yeah. 
That's another thing just to be keeping in mind because we don't talk about that that often because it's such a huge concept. It's a mind-blowing concept. That's true. Um, another question came up. Why build the semi-truck before the pickup truck? Because it seems to not make sense if you want to scale, scale bigger and bigger. And uh, J.B. Straubel kind of entered the conversation here and said, because lots of petroleum gets burned by a relatively small number of trucks, and they want to show that even the largest transportation can be done with electric. So, I mean, when they made the sports car, uh, when they made the Roadster, mm -hmm. they, they wanted to show that, that's, you know, you that could make a sexy. sports mm -hmm. car that was sexy, um, even though it was battery electric. Right. And, and a lot of people just thought that couldn't be done. You know, sports cars have to have an engine and stuff. That's a really and, good point. And, and trucks, you know, everyone thinks that it's got to have a big engine. Mm -hmm. It's got all Diesel, that power. Right. Um, but it really, I think, is going, they're going to change the, the, mindset. the mindset yet again. And I see. So you're saying that a lot of people who buy pickup trucks have that same mindset. They want to have a big, beefy engine. And right. by showing them that a Tesla semi can already do that, right. um, now it's an easy sell to show them that the pickup truck can right. be electric. It's like, of course. Yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah. Another thing that we learned on this conference call is just some fun quotes, I, yeah. I, I like to call these. Um, Elon said, it's insane how much equipment is being installed in the Fremont factory right now. It blows my mind. Wow. This is the guy who lands rockets on barges and just is an overall genius yeah he's his just... mind is blown i mean we're going to be visiting the factory in a month i i we may not survive i know <laughs> he was talking about the wiring harness for instance um so in the model s and the model x there's over three kilometers of wire so if you just laid it end to end right if you just wow. pulled all the wire out and laid it out um in the model three he's halved that so 1.5 kilometers wow so simplified Mm -hmm. And he's talking about in the Model Y, he's shooting for 300 meters. Oh, okay. That's, That's pretty good. That's one-fifth the wire that would be in the Model 3. Yeah. Um, one-tenth the wire that would be in the Model S and X. Wow. So another cool thing that came up during the conference call is that the Gigafactory, its main job is to make batteries at the moment. Yeah. And its goal was to make 35 gigawatt hours of batteries for the car. Okay. And 50 gigawatt hours of batteries for the Powerwall packs. And okay. For the battery packs. Yeah. So um, that's what, 85? 85 gigawatt hours. Gigawatt hours. hours came out during the conference call that they are now able to produce 100 gigawatt hours right now. Wow. So no problem making the Model 3. Like if anyone was doubting that the batteries will be ready, according to the conference call, they're ready to go. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. Also heard from Elon, another just interesting tidbit, was that he thinks no problem making 1 million cars by 2020. That's great. Yeah. Wow. That's that's <laughs> what one seventeenth of the of the American car market yeah, could and, be all electric. And just to point out that a lot of other car companies are talking about twenty twenty as their magical date, which they will be introducing electric cars to the market. Right. He's talking about being able to be making a million of them electric cars in twenty twenty. So take a company that'll just be entering the market, and then Tesla that'll be pounding out a million. If he can do it, that is another reason to be going long on Tesla. That's super exciting. Another thing that's super exciting. So how many Gigafactories do we have now? There's a Gigafactory 1 yep. in Sparks, Nevada. Mm -hmm. There's Gigafactory 2, which is making the solar panels. In Buffalo, right? In Buffalo. Uh, that's it, right? Yeah. Well, get this. He said, Elon said, I will announce locations for between two and four Gigafactories later this year. Probably four. Wow. <laughs> okay, so I mean... I'm just super excited to know where these things are going to go. I'm guessing, just a guess, that a couple of them will be in China. I think you're right. I mean, he's meeting with the, the vice premier yeah. in, in China uh, last week. I'm so excited. I hope that they don't have to partner with any Chinese companies. Right. I hope it can just be Tesla. Yeah. Right. Um, this is, I mean, so this conference call is so cool. We'll put a link down below. I think you can still access it from, from a past play. Mm -hmm. um, a little hard to listen to because they're all using telephones and it's all like on speakerphone so a lot of the stuff that Elon does he's kind of thinking in his head and he's mumbling so you kind of have to listen to it two or three times but mm -hmm. I hope we captured some of the fun stuff here for you yeah um, it's just really amazing anytime you get to listen to Elon talk I mean on the TED talk that we heard a couple weeks ago um, it's just that's mind-blowing yeah um, anytime he talks my mind just gets blown um, he, he's thinking about things so differently than most people absolutely all right so thank you so much for joining us for this episode of in depth um, if you liked it, please hit the uh, like button. Also, if you if you want to see more, hit the subscribe button because we do this every week. We also do a weekly news show where we cover um, some of the other news items uh, that we don't go quite as in depth as in depth. But right, and that comes out every Tuesday. Every Tuesday, and in depth is every Monday. So definitely subscribe. Um, we also have some. Uh, 
great patrons, some Patreon oh gosh, patrons. Yes. I love them so much. Um, if you want to become one, uh, there's the link down below and we'll put a little right there. We do a shout out to our patrons every week now on Tesla Time News because we love them so much. Absolutely. All right, so thank you so much for watching. Now you know.